take some good long deep in and out breaths. Get a sense of what kind of breath energy your body needs right now. If you're feeling tired, you may need some energizing breath. Long in, short out seems to help that way. Or whatever way of breathing you find that gives more energy to the body. If you're feeling tense, try to breathe in a way that's more relaxing. Short in, long out can help. Or whatever way you find helps to calm the body down, calm the mind down, help to give rise to a sense of serenity and ease. This quality of serenity is one of the factors of awakening. As you remember, there are two sides to the factors of awakening, there are those that are energizing and those that are calming. And serenity is the first of the calming factors. And you can develop it in two ways. In fact, you want both kinds of serenity, i.e. bodily serenity and mental serenity. Bodily serenity, you work with the breath. Remember the Buddha's instructions that once you're aware of long breathing, short breathing, try to make yourself aware of the whole body and then notice the effect that the breath is having on the body. And try to make that effect more serene. Make it more refined. Try to breathe in a way that's gentle to the body. This helps to calm things down within the body. The different processes calm down. Whatever tightness you may feel here or there in the body, think of it dissolving away. If there's a sense that the breathing requires a lot of effort, just remind yourself the breath is going to come in and out on its own. There are pores all over your body. You don't have to pull it in or push it out. The breath will come in naturally, go out naturally. Any perception you can hold in mind that helps to make the breath easier. Experiment to see what way of picturing the breath to yourself helps to make the process of breathing more serene. At the same time, you want to develop mental serenity as well. Calm the mind down. This also has to do with your perceptions, but it's more perceptions of how things are in your life. Any perception that allows you to let things go, or at least for the time being, let go of your concerns for your work, your family, the world at large. You can't be responsible for everybody 24-7. You've got to have time for yourself. And realize that the world will probably run perfectly fine without you. You're going to have to let it go someday anyhow, so practice letting go now. So in this way you make the body more serene and the mind more serene at the same time. These are qualities that help give rise to concentration. Another way of making the mind more serene is to develop the Brahma-viharas, the sublime attitudes, immeasurable goodwill, immeasurable compassion, immeasurable empathetic joy, immeasurable equanimity. These thoughts are soothing to the mind. In the beginning, you have to work through them. You ask yourself, is there anybody out there for whom you cannot feel goodwill? And certain faces will probably appear in your mind. 
And you have to remind yourself, nobody benefits from seeing those people suffer. And often, if they suffer, they come back and they get more vengeful. So it's not going to help the world in any way at all to wish their suffering, to wish them ill will. Same with compassion. There are plenty of people out there suffering, and there are also people who are creating the causes for suffering. You have to have compassion for both. And when you realize that, and you can have compassion even for the people who are creating suffering, that takes a lot of the edge of your inability to let go of the world. It allows you to put things down for the time being. The same with empathetic joy. Is there anybody out there for whom you, whose good fortune you can't feel happy? Again, realizing that you're being jealous of their good fortune doesn't help. Or you're feeling that it's not right that they've got that good fortune. You have to remember some place in the past they must have done something right. Think about yourself. Maybe someday you're going to come into good fortune. Do you want other people around you to be jealous? Well, no. And remember, empathetic joy isn't just for people who are experiencing good fortune, it's also people who are creating the causes for good fortune, creating the causes for happiness, whether they're experiencing that happiness yet or not. You rejoice in the fact that they're doing good. That's a calming thought. It helps make the mind more serene. And of course, there's equanimity. Realizing that each of us is the owner of his or her own actions. There's only so much in this world that you can exert any control over at all. And the prime thing you can exert control over is your own mind. So by working on your mind, you're going to help other things. Focus your attention here, and the effects are going to spread out, which means you can begin to let go a lot of your concerns for things out there, the things you can't control. To whatever extent you can control things, it comes under your ability to train the mind well right now. This helps to focus you in, helps you put other things aside. You can reflect on your own virtue, you can reflect on your own generosity. These are calming thoughts as well. Realizing that even though your virtue may not be perfect, you've got some good things that you've done in the past. Your generosity may not be perfect, but there are areas where you've helped other people, either through material gifts or gifts of your time, gifts of your forgiveness, gifts of your knowledge. All these ways of thinking are ways of helping get the mind more serene. So it's able to settle down in the present moment with a sense of well-being. The sense of well-being is important because concentration requires it. It's an important part of the path. Sometimes you hear people saying that you've got to be aware of getting stuck on a sense of pleasure, a sense of bliss, or a sense of well-being. But the Buddha rem reminds us that this kind of well-being is blameless. I mean, there's so many other ways that people have of looking for pleasure outside that are not blameless at all. Cause trouble for themselves, cause trouble for other people. This form of well-being is skillful. It's worth developing. And the danger of getting stuck here is extremely minor compared to the dangers of looking for your pleasure elsewhere. Because the nature of the mind is that it wants pleasure. If it can't find it inside, it's going to go looking outside. If you can't produce your own food, you're going to go looking for food from other people. Of course, you know what you get from them mainly. As, as John Lee says, it's the food they spit out, the words they spit out. That's not good eating at all. So 
So as long as the mind is going to look for pleasure, learn how to create it inside in a way that's blameless, in a way that's skillful. And it's normal that as you're working on this and you find that you aren't getting results, there will be a certain amount of attachment, there will be a certain amount of clinging. That's part of developing the skill. It's what keeps you interested in this, working at it, allowing it to capture your imagination. And as with so many other aspects of the path, you cling to it for a while, and then when it's done its work, then you learn how to let it go. Because if you don't have this to hold on to, remember, it's part of the raft. If you're not holding on to the raft, what's happening to you? You're falling down into the river and getting washed away. So the sense of ease, well-being, serenity is a really important part of the practice, your ability to induce it is one of the really necessary skills. So the mind isn't sneaking out and trying to find its food someplace else. So don't be afraid of this ease. Don't be afraid of this pleasure. Learn how to use it. It's healing for the body, it's healing for the mind. It is one of the necessary factors for awakening. So learn how to give rise to it, learn how to maintain it, learn how to use it. This is an important skill in your repertoire. 